In this example problem, we're going to investigate the Doppler shift, the Doppler effect due to motion of either the source or the observer. In this case, we're going to have a, a unit that emits sound. So this is not a police radar car problem, but the principles are the same. Uh, but we're going to emit sound, and this sound is a beam towards the moving car. The frequency of the sound is 440 hertz, and the sound is going to reflect off the car, and there's enough energy that it bounces back to us, and we receive it where the source of sound is located at a frequency of 522.4 hertz um, because of the Doppler shift effect. The car does not have its own sound generator. All of this is just the sound created by the original equipment. The sound goes to the car, a little simple drawing here, uh, but the sound is emitted, goes towards the car, hits the car, and then comes back and is detected where it was emitted. We want to know the velocity of the car, and the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. One thing right away to discuss would be, is the car moving towards the source of sound, or is it moving away? Well, the sound was emitted at 440 hertz, it's being received at 522 hertz, a higher frequency. That indicates that the car, in fact, is moving towards the source of sound. If the frequency was lower, then the uh, car would be moving away. So let's discuss what we have here for our equations. There are two equations. On the left, for the case that the uh, observer is stationary, we get a new frequency, f prime, that's equal to the original frequency divided by the quantity 1, and then you have to use your concept of knowledge of the motion direction to either select the minus sign or the plus sign, and we're going to have velocity of the source of sound and the velocity of sound, so the sound wave itself in, in air, and we're using 340 meters per second for this example problem. So if the observer is stationary and the source of sound is moving. That's not the case here, but it will be the case for this car. This car in this problem is going to effectively be a source of sound. Even though it's just reflecting sound, it is treated as a moving uh, source. So if we're going to get a higher frequency, which sign do you think we should use, the minus sign or the plus sign, if f prime is to be higher than f? Well, we need to divide by a value that is smaller than 1. That means we use the minus sign for this problem. So over on the right side, if the observer is moving, and that's the case for this stationary source, beaming sound towards the car, the, an observer, if you want to imagine yourself in the car, you're moving, and you're coming across these uh, sound waves more rapidly than you would if you were standing still and that generates the higher frequency. In this calculation, f prime is the new frequency due to motion, f is the original frequency. Should we use the plus sign or the minus sign if we want f prime to be larger than f? We're multiplying now, so we want a value in the parentheses that's bigger than 1. We'll use the plus sign in our calculation. So you need to know a little bit about the motion, or else by trial and error you'll discover which is uh, the correct plus or minus sign. So let's now go ahead and put in a few numbers, um, talking about what's the frequency that the car receives. What frequency does the car receive? This f prime is going to be 1 plus the unknown velocity of the car divided by the velocity of the sound, and our original frequency from the source is 440 hertz. Then the car is going to become a source of sound, and I'm going to use double prime. This is not the derivative, but it just means another different frequency. So the frequency that comes back to the original location of the equipment that's emitting the sound, the sound reflected from the car, this frequency, is going to be equal to the frequency the car receives divided by 1 minus velocity of the car divided by velocity of the sound. So we're going to put these together. I'm actually going to use this f prime here. I'm going to substitute this expression for f prime over here. So let's go ahead and do that. The frequency that the uh, 
is detected reflected from the car. We were given 522.4 Hertz. Here is the frequency calculation for the frequency the car receives for the sound. 1 plus velocity, unknown velocity of the car divided by 340 meters per second times 440. That's this calculation substituting for the F prime symbol over here. And then we still have this uh, denominator, 1 minus velocity of the car, and now putting in the speed of sound, 340 meters per second. My first step is going to be divide both sides by 440 hertz. So the hertz unit is canceled, and we have 1.1873. I would suggest occasionally you pause the video and use your calculator to uh, check my work. The other thing I've done in this step is to multiply both sides by this denominator. So the quantity 1 minus V car divided by 340. My next activity is going to be to distribute through the parentheses on the left. And at first we just have 1.1873 for that quantity times 1. Here I'm taking 1.1873 and dividing by 340. And I come up with a coefficient, uh, a factor in front of velocity of the car, 3.492 times 10 to the minus 3. Over on the right side, again, I've divided 1 by 340, and I have a, a number multiplying velocity of the car. So algebra comes in here. We combine the like terms. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides to combine the numbers, and I'm going to add... Um, yeah, I'm going to add 3.492 times 10 to the minus 3 velocity of the car. I'm going to add that term to both sides. So again, pause and check my work. 0.1873 equals 6.4332 times 10 to the minus 3 times velocity of the car. I divide by the uh, number that's multiplying velocity of the car, and I came up with 29.1 meters per second. 29.1 meters per second, that's the speed of the car. For velocity, the car is 29.1 meters per second coming towards the source of the sound. If I want to know the miles per hour, one mile per hour is 0.447 and put meters per second here for units. And so this is about 65 miles per hour. Um, so semi-hypothetical problem, the difficulty would be hearing the sound above background noise. Um, but the principle of Doppler shift for sound, we need to keep track of what, which object is moving, the source or the observer, and correct, select the correct plus or minus sign based on our uh, knowledge of the concept that when objects are approaching each other, the new frequency must be higher than the original frequency. Uh, if you want to investigate some other physics or astronomy videos. These two websites have them listed, organized. The uh, videos are described. There uh, is a link to directly to the YouTube video. Uh, if you enjoy these uh, short lectures and example problems, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's no cost for doing so.